entertainment magazine editor and author Laurie Majewski shares her lust for lists with you now. Hey, First Waivers, Laurie Majewski here, and I've got a co-host here today who is a new member, brand spanking new member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He's a member of The Cure, Roger O'Donnell. And we've got an hour's worth of incredible songs. We came in with Shake Dog Shake, The Cure, the first song you guys played the yeah. other night. Yeah, it was nice to play that. And the band, we had to fight for it to get it on the set list. I mean, I think most people expected us to stick to the hits. But Andy Anderson, a drummer that was in the band, sadly died recently, and he played on that track. It was kind of one of his signature songs and so Simon and I suggested we do that as a tribute to him and also it's a good way to open the show because it's really you know it's quite an impactful song it wasn't obviously wasn't our audience I mean there were a few Cure fans there but it was you know mainly business kind of crowd wasn't it and actually in, in rehearsals looking down at all those cardboard cutouts of all the faces <laughs> was a bit intimidating seeing Brian May in front of me <laughs> right like in the seat yeah. during rehearsals there yeah. are like cutouts with everybody's names wh who's going to be sitting where yeah that was weird <laughs> that was weird and we resisted drawing moustaches on them. <laughs> all right well now we're going to play a song by Nine Inch Nails and what did you think of Trent's speech I was a little nervous at that stage, I have to admit, I wasn't really listening. <laughs> I'm sure it was great though. But he came in the dressing room before we went back to the table and he was really nervous as well. Like Robert said, there's a huge difference between playing and talking. But yeah, I've read parts of it since and it was I think it was really heartfelt. And when you know, we've we get a lot of name checks from musicians that we respect and that's really that's a really super nice thing. And Trent's a great guy. We've known him for uh, 25 years, maybe. Here's Terrible Lie. How Soon Is Now, The Smiths, right here on First Wave. I'm Laurie Majewski. This is Lust for Lists. And we're talking about the band led by The Smith, the Cure. I have Roger O'Donnell, newly minted Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. <laughs> he he kind of giggles every time I say that. Yeah, well, because uh, I'm thinking of the trophy that they gave us. When you say minted, because it's like this, it's hideous. I'm not quite <laughs> sure what it is. It's a guy holding a symbol or something, isn't it? And it's really heavy. You'll see it when I put it up on eBay. Anyway. <laughs> oh my God, you are too much. <laughs> All right. I remember watching the Young Marcy biopic, England is Mine, and I went, Roger O'Donnell was a producer on this? <laughs> and it's funny because people who watched it in the theater with us at the premiere here in New York were saying the same thing. A bunch of Cure fans came up to me afterwards mm -hmm. and were like, wait a minute. You know, there's been a war going on between the Smiths and the Cure since I can remember. Based on it, he's an idiot. So I tell these guys, okay, I'll invest, but we need an, an NDA so that nobody ever finds out. And then it got to a stage that it kind of leaked out. So I can't remember how it leaked out. And then I was with Robert and we were supposed to be somewhere until like midnight. And I was hoping that he hadn't found out. And it got to three minutes to midnight and he came up to me <laughs> and said, um, so Roger, what about this film? I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, well, why did you do it? And I said, well, I hate him and I could make a lot of money out of it. <laughs> so that's basically why I did it. Well, the next song we're going to play, The Cure, Plain Song, Disintegration, the first album where you are a fully, again, minted mm -hmm. member. Minted member. Um, you had played with The Cure on tour, on the Kiss Me tour. Yep. That album is people say not only the Cure's finest moment, but the finest moment of the alternative music era. How do you feel when you hear that album today? I mean, I've got memories from every song, I think, from recording them in the studio. And they are very deep and emotional memories. And we were all at a party uh, last year. I sat next to Robert and we were talking about making it. Because people always say to me, did you know when you were making it that it was going to be such an amazing album? I never did. I thought we were just making the next Cure album. And I said that to Robert, and he's like, yeah, I knew it was going to be a great album. <laughs> so, 
he probably knew more because we recorded the whole album without vocals. He so he knew how it was going to sound. So I didn't hear the full vocal versions until I first heard it on a cassette, which was weird. Let's hear it. Here's plain song. Back again with Roger O'Donnell. You are going to premiere Two on an Old Train, a new Oh yeah. A new composition, solo composition. Yeah. On the end of the 2016 tour when I got home. Because touring is kind of really a non creative process. You go out on stage every night and you just play, which is another you know, there are kind of two sides to being a musician. There's performance and there's composition. And I just got home and I just wanted to write. So I wrote another album. And then a friend of mine who, who used to work with us in The Cure, Daryl Bermonti, who was our tour manager for years, he's a publisher. And I played it to him and he's like, oh, would you be interested in working with a singer on it? And I was like, well, that's a weird idea. I've never thought about it at all. And there's a girl called uh, Jennifer Paig. And he said, let me give it to Jen and see what she does with it. And she sang on one song, wrote the uh, lyrics and sung it. And I was just blown away because it was such a contrast. She's got a very American aesthetic and the lyrics were kind of random and quite poetic. And it was just such a contrast to the piano and cellos that it worked. So she wrote lyrics for three more songs. And last April, we went into a studio in London and recorded it all the strings. And in a week, then we mixed it later in the year. And we hope to release it this year sometime. So this song in particular, Two on an Old Train, people are going to hear it and they're going to want to download it, but they're going to have to yeah. wait a minute? Unfortunately, it's not available yet. So just record it. <laughs> Old school, get your yeah, cassette Yeah, just get your out. cassette recorder up. Well, we just heard Thompson Twins' Nothing in Common, and you're probably thinking, wow, that's a Thompson Twins song I haven't heard in a while. 1986, if you remember, it's from the film of the same name, which had Tom Hanks and the last ever performance by Jackie Gleason. The reason I played that is because Roger O'Donnell, our guest host today, did you play on the song? I know you were in the music video. I actually wasn't in the band anymore. But you were in Thompson yeah. Twins, which itself is going to be a revelation to some people <laughs> listening. I left the band in December 1984, and they came to Chicago to shoot that video because Tom Hanks was in it. And He's playing drums, you're on keyboards. Yeah, it was really cool hanging out with him. He's such a nice guy. So they needed a keyboard player, and they auditioned some local people, and they didn't think they looked right. And I was living in Toronto at the time, so they flew me down for the day kind of weird that I'd been in the band for two years and never been in a video. I left the band and then I was in a video. <laughs> so <laughs> That is too much. Yeah. But, you know, you joined The Cure in 1987 mm-hmm. and it's in part because you knew Boris, yeah. Boris Williams, who was in The Cure, but he was also in the Thompson Twins with you. Yeah. We both st- stopped playing for a while because we were just tired of not having any money and we got jobs as motorcycle messengers in London. And... Then he got the job in the Thompson Twins, and I was like, oh, Boris, get me out of this. And then one day, I got a call to pick up from the Hammersmith Palais, which is where the Thompson Twins were playing. So I went there on my motorbike, and I was like, oh, I don't want to see anyone. I'm so embarrassed by this. And then I said to the tour manager, is Boris around? And he said, no, he'll be back later. And so I had to go and pick something up. I brought it back, and I saw Boris, and I'm like, Boris, get me a job, please. And about three months later, I got a call saying they needed one of the keyboard players was quitting, and would I go and audition? And that was it. And then I got that job. And Boris takes credit for getting me every job that I've ever had, which is pretty funny, but it's kind of true. <laughs> again by Roger O'Donnell keyboardist for New Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members The Cure. You also played with Berlin. Yeah. I mean that's a great keyboard band if yeah, there was one. And I really fucked that up. <laughs> Seriously. I learned a lesson there that I've never forgotten. 
Well, they were opening for the Thompson Twins on tour, on that Into the Gap tour in 1984. And I became really good friends with John and David and Terry. And they were going to Australia. And David Diamond, who's a really good friend of mine now, quit the band. And they're like, oh, we need a keyboard player. Do you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Because, uh, you know, I watched them every night. I thought, you know, it's synth pop. It's easy. I don't know. And then I had two weeks between the end of the Twins tour and the start of their tour. And I thought, ah, I don't need to rehearse this. It's easy. You know, wh what's there to learn? So I arrived at first rehearsal. I didn't know any of the songs. And it was awful. It was so embarrassing. David so she sang a cappella at that point? <laughs> It was horrible. I was like, and I was supposed to play that lead bass line on sex. David actually offered to rejoin the band because it was so bad. I managed to pull it together. But since then, I work for about a month before I go to a rehearsal studio. You know, rehearsals aren't for learning songs. They're for playing with the band. So that was that's what I took away from Berlin. All right. And the last song... My favorite song by The Cure and a song that you played at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony, A Forest. It was so dramatic. Like, <laughs> I felt it was so amazing. People in the audience were watching. If they didn't know who or what The Cure was yeah. about, their mouths were open. Did you yeah. feel that? No. You were just like, let me play <laughs> my just, part. Let's get this over with. <laughs> let's get to Just Like Heaven because after that, I just have to play tambourine. It's a very intense song and... I use in-ear monitors, so everything that they're playing, everyone else is playing and, and Robert's singing, goes straight into my ears. And sometimes I look over at Robert and Simon and I just think of all the history and it becomes really emotional. And for me to be a part of that is really special. And after the show, I thank Robert for my being in the band. After the rock call? Yeah. <laughs> That's so lovely. Well, thank you yeah. so much for being here. Come back again when the new album comes out, okay? Yeah, I will. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.